scientists. Welcome to PS Science. Today, the topic we're going to be looking at is reflection of light. Okay, scientists, I have a question for you. Have you ever noticed that you can see yourself in some surfaces, but not others? Why do you think that is? What I'd like you to do now is pause the video and go around your home and see if you can find different types of objects. Some of them you'll be able to see your reflection and others you won't. Collect those objects. Notice what they look like. Look at their properties. Are they rough, smooth, flat, round, bumpy, fluffy? Look at different types of objects and see, can I see my reflection or not? Write those note, um, observations down in your science journal, okay? So we can compare the properties and see what we can discover about different types of objects. Now, I also did this and I found a few objects that I noticed made it very easy for me to see my reflection. The first and most obvious is a mirror. Now a mirror is designed so that its purpose really is so that you can see a reflection. So that's how it is. And I can see my reflection there in this mirror. Um, an object that I could not see my reflection in was this piece of paper. No matter how hard I look at myself, I will never ever see my reflection in this piece of white paper. So this is an example of thing, a thing that does not reflect light. One thing I noticed when I looked at this iPad when it was off is that I could actually see my reflection in it. You see myself there? So even though it's not a mirror, I can still see my reflection. The same thing is true for some windows. You kind of partially see a reflection and you partially don't. Another interesting type of object is a spoon. Have you ever looked at yourself in a spoon? I recommend you give this a try. How, how and why you see what you see is an object, is a lesson for a different video, but it's pretty interesting to see. But right now, we're really very interested in why you can see yourself reflected so nicely in a mirror, but not in a piece of paper. So what do you notice about these two objects? Well, they're both opaque. Remember, opaque means light does not travel through. So they're both opaque, now, the difference between this piece of paper and this mirror is that the mirror has a very flat, shiny surface. The paper is also very flat, but it is not at all shiny. If you were to look really, really, really closely at this, this piece of paper to individual rays of light actually appears very bumpy. And so what happens when the light comes from my eye and my face and tries to scatter off this piece, try to reflect off this piece of paper, the light gets sent in lots of different directions. And that's why I can't see my image. Because the mirror is so flat and so shiny, the light that comes off my eye travels in straight lines and those straight lines travel directly to the camera. And so what you see is a very clear image of my face in this mirror. All right, to recap, let's talk about what it is about light. What are its properties that allow me to be able to see my reflection so nicely in a mirror? The first thing is that light travels in straight lines. We saw this in the previous video when we looked at a laser. Do you remember shining a laser light on in a straight line and then squirting water droplets so that it, the light would reflect off the droplets into our eyes? That allowed us to see the beam. Do you remember what the beam looked like? It was straight, very straight. Light always travels in straight lines. This is always true. That's one thing. The second thing that allows us to see our reflection, uh, an image of ourselves in a mirror, is the fact that when light bounces off a surface, the angle it bounces off of is exactly the same as the angle it comes in with. That is always true and very predictable about light. But what does that look like and how, what do we mean by that? Well, I asked my sons to help demonstrate this um, idea by bouncing a ball for me to one, from one person to the next. Watch what happens when they bounce a ball to each other. The ball bounces and reflects. You notice how the first angle is exactly equal to the second angle? That's reflection. The same thing is true for light. Light also travels, when it hits a surface, it reflects, and the angle that it reflects 
is exactly the same as the angle that it came in at. To demonstrate this, we're going to do an experiment using a mirror and lasers. First we get the room really dark. Then we get our water bottle and spray droplets of water onto the laser beam as it's reflecting off the mirror. Do you see just how straight those lines are and how the angle in is exactly equal to the angle out of the mirror? That's how reflection works. And it, if we change the angle to make it bigger, you'll see that the and it, what happens is the angle out also becomes bigger. So light behaves in a very predictable way. Another really neat experiment you can try is to work with more than one mirror at a time. Actually, your bathroom might be the best place for this. If you hold up one mirror and look at yourself in the bathroom mirror, I have a setup where I'm gonna take this little Lego minifig and put him in front of more than one mirror and see what happens. So I'm gonna take my mirror setup and I'm gonna put it right in front of him. Let's see. So there he is. Let me place mirrors that I put at this angle to each other. What do you notice? Can you see more than one reflection of him? I can actually see four if I look really carefully. Can I change the number of images I see? Let's see if I change the angle here. What would happen if I move it to this angle? Now, I'm looking at even more images. I can see one, two, three, four, five, six in total. Altogether, there's six images in this. And I can change it even more as I change the angle on this. You can see you can get more and more and more images of this little Lego minifig, depending on the angle that you put these two mirrors at. Try it yourself. Find a mirror in your home and hold up a mirror to it and see if you can see more than one of you in the mirror's reflection. It's a fun exercise and it really shows you some of the important things about light. We're gonna recap them now. Okay, scientists, let's recap what we learned today. We were trying to explain why a mirror is such a good reflector, but a piece of paper isn't. And we did that by explaining two really important properties of light. One of the properties is that it all, light always travels in a straight line. And the second one is when it hits a surface, an opaque surface, it reflects. And the angle of reflection is always going to be equal to the angle that it landed on the surface. With a smooth, shiny surface like a mirror, all those rays come in parallel and leave parallel. They don't get jumbled around. But with a piece of paper, for example, even though it looks like it's sort of smooth, when, you, when you're as small as a, bit, a ray of light, the paper looks really bumpy so the angles that it, that, so that it lands and gets reflected all over the place. That's why light from a mirror is so nice and it allows us to see our beautiful faces. Thank you so much for joining me for this uh, video and I'll see you again soon. Okay scientists, thanks for watching. Did you enjoy that lesson? Subscribe below to see more fun science videos. You can also become a member of PS Science on Patreon to support what we're doing. See you next time.